So it's Friday. Happy Friday. Friday fatwa. Right across our country, right now, millions of Muslims are bending over, praying in their mosques. And I'm going to go through some stories which come as a result of them following that faith in those mosques. Start on Piers Morgan. Piers, hello Piers, how you doing? If you're watching this. Piers, when I went on the Piers Morgan show, okay, we all remember what happened, we'll get to it in a bit. But we had a young British woman who converted to Islam. She's from Harrow. She said that every time growing up, no, she didn't convert to Islam, she was born a Muslim, Bangladeshi. Every time she tried to follow a Western life, she wanted to grow up to be a young English woman. But every time she tried to step in or follow a Western life, she was shamed by her community because it's completely haram. Her words, not mine. Everything she tried to do that was Western was haram. So, she ended up going on a dating website for other Muslims. She met this lovely man from America in Texas who was an American convert to Islam. They started talking about jihad. He has gone on to become one of the world's leading ISIS fighters. She left the UK with him. If I go through the story, they met up in Texas, they come back to the UK from Syria. They went to Syria first, 2004. She comes back to the UK because she's having a baby, of course. Use the NHS, use our system. She disappears again. She goes on to have four children, okay? Now, they travel together in the end. When ISIS explodes, they travel to join ISIS. She then leaves and she escapes to Turkey with her four children. But her husband dropped her off to leave, which is quite strange anyway. But he's still out there fighting for ISIS. She goes out, she leaves, she heads back to Texas to, to be with his family. She's left Islam, okay? She's on speaking to Piers Morgan. She's now a reformed character. Let's play what she says. Yeah, I was an extremist. I was one of them and I'm a former extremist and I understand the minds of extremists and I know how to de-radicalise too. I, I can help these people with, just like they get indoctrinated, you can be unindoctrinated. It, it just takes some re-education and a little bit of empathy goes a long way. So what do you believe, um, what do you believe, what, I, what do you believe the Quran tells you now? So here's Piers asking, what do you believe the Quran says now? Believing in one stage, so he's probably expecting her to say something quite nice. I think the Quran is a terrible book. Um, I think it's a terrible book. Now, what's the difference? Should Piers act the same way he did with me, he would right now say, show some damn respect. And he would also go on to tell her she's a bigot. But let's see if he treats a brown lady differently to he treats a white man. I think the Quran is, I think the Quran was written by a man who believed he was a prophet but he had an older wife who was 15 years older that pushed the idea onto him. He probably had epilepsy because he had a lot of seizures. He was a merchant and he interacted with neighboring religions from all over the region of the Middle East and to India and Rome. Oh, his, no interruption. You know, I was curious about religion too, so I wanted to read the Quran. And when I read it, I, I you know, I took it for what it said and I was like, oh, I didn't realise that I didn't know my religion very well until I read the Quran. So when she read the Quran, she took it for what it said, which was... And it did advocate jihad and it did advocate war and... Oh, it advocated jihad and it advocated war? Um, fighting the non-believers. Oh, fighting the non-believers! Well, imagine that! <laughs> oh, God! It's not like we've tried saying that or anyone else has tried saying that, but yeah. But my point in this video is simply Piers' treatment of her he didn't scream at her, he didn't call her a bigot or a fascist or anything of the such because she's a brown lady. I'm a white male and he let her rip on me. Show some damn respect for Show people's some... religious beliefs. But this woman now is actually living in Texas. She wants to advocate against extremism. To be honest, I find it, she says there's a way out. You can unindoctrinate people. That doesn't work. That's not working in our prison system. The numbers show, the statistics show it themselves. You're not able to de-radicalise. You're not able to reintegrate. You want to reintegrate people who weren't integrated into our society anyway. She fell in love, okay? She fell in love. She went out to fight with ISIS for her husband. So Donald Trump's travel ban. 
Donald Trump stopping people coming in from seven predominantly Muslim countries. Well, the Department of Homeland Security and the Department of Justice have just released that more than 70% of terror-related convicts in the United States are foreign-born. More than 70%. In that instance, if you did have a Muslim ban or an Islamic ban, 70% of the people who were have been done for terrorism would not have been allowed into that country. Now, America's job is to protect the American people first and foremost. That's one step they should go to to protect them. That would protect them. When you read the actual numbers, when you read the numbers, you know in 2017 alone, two and a half thousand people on the American watch list for terrorism attempted to enter America. Two and a half thousand people in that one year attempted to enter America, but they were refused. These would be some of the people who, when they were refused, all the left, all the Democrats, all the socialists, all the media went mad about how unfair it is. How unfair it is that Donald Trump is attempting to protect the American people from jihad. Yes, completely unfair. That's a statistic, that's a fact. Majority of terrorists in America are from outside, they're foreign born. Stop letting them in. Another terror trial happening right now in Britain. They're happening every day, every single day across our country. Another terror trial. Big Ben was among the terror targets, okay? Not just Big Ben. Now, this man who's been arrested, who's charged with terrorism, he was a school teacher, okay? He worked in a school teaching religion, teaching Islam, of course. But we're told these people don't understand Islam. But this man was a teacher of Islam. He taught at the local mosques. He taught everywhere, okay? Now, he has been charged because he's on listing devices. They heard him saying, I want a target in Westminster. I want a target in Stratford. He wants to plan these complete terrorist attacks. Guess what his targets were? Have you heard about this? Did you know there was another planned attempt to murder and blow up the English Defence League? We had one when I was leading the English Defence League, where six Muslims were sent to prison. They were sentenced to 28 to 30 years, and they were caught with guns, bombs, IEDs, and suicide notes. This man, his targets were English Defence League or Britain first. This is when you have to think about the situation with Paul Golding and Jada Franson. Okay? Think about the police are putting them in a situation with these bogus court cases and these trumped up charges. Now, Paul Golding has to sign in a police station at a certain time on a certain day every week. I know when it is. It took me 10 minutes to find out. Which means this jihadi, who wants to kill Paul Golding by the sounds of it, by the police reports, okay, it takes him 10 minutes to find out where Paul Golding is. He can then go down and kill him. The police and the government are putting people on our side of the fence and who are fighting our cause, they're putting their lives in danger. Their lives are being put in danger. Which is un and then Mr. Hack, who was a religious teacher, okay? He was a lit religious teacher and at a normal school, not an Islamic school, at a normal school, he was showing the children terrorist, let me get to where it is, publications. He was di disseminating terrorist publications at the Lantern of Knowledge Secondary School in London. Now, where did he recruit? Where would he recruit his people? Because there's four people on charge. Where would he recruit them? Go on, have a guess. It couldn't be the mosque, because mosques have nothing to do with this. Yes, it was the mosque. Okay, he got his pals from the mosque, where he was going, and four of them are now on terrorist charges for planning to blow us all up. Is that mosque still operating unchallenged? Yes, it is. Would the local Labour councillors and MPs still speak very highly of that glowing centre of moderation? Of course they would. Of course they would, because they'll be voted back in by the people who attend that mosque. One, I, the mad thing is, a lot of people go, this goes under their noses. You have to realise just how bad the situation is. How many terror attacks are being planned? How many people are being arrested for terrorism? What their targets were? Part of his other in intended targets were Shia Muslims. Sectarian conflict on our streets, banks in the city of London, parliament, foreign embassies, media stations. He wanted to blow everything up. Luckily, our security services stopped him. He's on trial. Let's have a look at another one. One more case this week. Up to Leeds. Leeds is the same city where we've just had, if you've been watching our Support Bev campaign, same city where this poor Beverly was fired for daring to post anything critical in any way of Islam, yeah? Well, maybe if she'd have posted this, I wonder what he'd have to say. Husband bludges his Muslim convert wife to death after she ditched her Islamic clothes. This lady converted to Islam, got with a Muslim, had children with him, and then decided, 
I got bored of it and wanted to dress normally again in her Western clothes. What did he do? He enlisted a couple of other Muslim friends and he butchered her to death with a claw hammer. Then he set fire to her body in a mattress. Now, has her death got anything to do with Islam? Is it just a domestic? Or is it because he went against her Islamic beliefs? She went against the Islam, Islam's beliefs and teachings, and for that, in what Muslims would describe as honour violence, she has been murdered. Pretty young girl, look at her, look. So this is the point where any girls, because I met them all throughout my life in Luton, any girls who are then getting with Muslim boys, who are a bit excited by it all, and oh, it's all a bit exciting because they've got nice cars and the grooming process, which even, this grooming process, and doesn't just happen to children, Happens to women. I speak to Sikh charities all the time who are dealing with this with elder women. They've still been groomed. They've still been brainwashed. They're still going through a process. But yeah, Sinead Woodings, I wonder what her Islamic name was. But Akshar Ali was today found guilty of the murder. And his pal, Yasmin Ahmed, his pal was a lady, a female lady, a Muslim lady. It was a Muslim lady who he, he got involved to help him kill and get rid of the body. Because obviously a Muslim lady would have thought it's justified because she's, well, she's not wearing her hijab. Is she? So, that's just, I could do this. It's depressing though in the stories of what's happening in our country and that so many people are oblivious to the effects. These are all of these things I've just spoke to you about. All of them are the effects Islam brings. Now let's end this on Hadith of the Week. Hadith of the week. Hadiths are the sayings and teachings of the Prophet Muhammad. These are taken very seriously by Muslims, okay? And I do this each week to just show people just how ridiculous this is. This scripture, this belief in Allah, in Muhammad, how ridiculous backwards the whole thing is, okay? The Prophet said, this is narrated by Ibn Abbas, yeah? the Prophet said, if any one of you on having sexual relations with your wife, said, and he must say it before starting, in the name of oh Allah, oh Allah, protect us from Satan and protect what you bestow upon us, i.e. the coming of offspring, the babies, yeah? Then it is destined that they should have a child, then Satan will never be able to harm that offspring. So picture this. Right across our country, before Muslims have sex with their wives, they hold their hands up in the air, in the air, okay? If you're a female, it's just not going to turn you off. Oh Allah, oh Allah, protect us from Satan and protect us from what you bestow upon us. Then they jump on and get involved. You lunatics. Absolute lunatics. But if any of you ever hear, if you live next door to Muslims, you hear, oh Allah, oh Allah, and you're concerned, don't worry, they're just about to get jiggy. Thank you for joining us and thank you for supporting us. I'm going to take this opportunity again to say thank you to everyone who's supporting this show, who's supporting our ability to get out there, get out and about, and find the news and bring in the stories. Thank you. Our videos are free for everybody anywhere to watch, but they're not free to make. We have a studio, we have a camera crew, we have editors, we have security. I'm asking for your help to keep us on the air.